Unfortunately, our house and our home is extremely peaceful. We just don't, we, we're just pretty calm in our house. Things are, are really low key. Um, our kids are calm. We're just very, but it's not been that way the last part of this week. It's been extremely, um, there's been a lot of fear and a lot of chaos and a lot of, and I haven't really understood and even, I mean, Andy and I don't even, I'm just going to be real vulnerable. We're not recording Facebook Live, so it's all right. Because um, you're, I mean, we've even had, a, and we're, we're not fussers and fighters, and I mean, down to the, you know, oh, it's like, yeah. I don't understand what you're saying. You don't understand what I'm saying. It's not going well. We're not those kind of people. We always find our way through. And I'm just, this morning, I'm like, there is such something that is, and we need to wake up. And not buy into it and not um, partner with those things that are wanting to destroy our homes wanting to destroy our relationships wanting to steal our peace wanting to steal what we have been given from the Lord and um, I, I think there's just something you know when a word is given like Dwayne gave that word a few weeks ago on Wednesday night do you remember it yet sort of and I'm trying to remember all of it. I just remember a lot of it was, we're, we're so busy. We give you all our heart. We give you all our soul. But, you know, my husband can't get it together. My wife, she's never going to see things. Like, That's not giving you all my. <laughs> I was very convicted this morning. You know, it's not. that's not me giving all my everything to you, Lord. And, you know, we're like, you're not seeing what I, I'm trying to say. You're not hearing what I'm trying to. Yes, I am. You're not seeing. That's close to getting us anywhere, you know. Okay. But just, and we're usually not those kind of people. And then just the fear and the um, every. I mean, we had some weird things go on all through the night one night. Um, I mean, we had sheriffs departments. We, I mean, it was just a bizarre week. Okay? <coughs> so what I'm saying is there is such something that wants to intrude where we're supposed to be at the most level of peace where we're supposed to be and I, I just I don't know something hit me this morning Jamie you're not the only one that's been invaded and by your head nods I'm like I'm not you know and so I just say we have we have to partner with faith we have to partner with peace we have to partner with what he is saying and declaring over the people who live in our house. You got it? All right. He's got it. We, we, and we have to see the one in front of us the way he sees, you know, and sometimes it's not fair. stopping and say, okay, I'm not going to be distracted right. by the thing. Right. I'm going to keep my focus on the king. Okay, so just stay in that focus, right. uh, which is the hardest. You know, uh, you've ever been hit in the mouth? It's hard to stay focused on right. what you're trying to do. You're trying right. to get away. You're not trying to hurt somebody. The enemy is hitting us, and he's trying to keep us away from him. Our, our objective is the presence of God, the glory of God, the revival of yeah, yeah. And we we sometimes partner with the wrong thing, not realizing this is totally to move me out of a place and move my home and move my my life into a different position. The yeah. whole world is in chaos. Yes, ma'am. The entire I, I told Andy this morning we started worship, I'm like, Dang, we need to cut through some maneuver. Yeah. Like, yeah. Ooh. yeah. And then yeah. we did. It wasn't Alan. <laughs> 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 he wears clean shoes. <laughs> but we need to 
be aware. Yes, ma'am. And sometimes we feel so isolated because we want to hide those parts of our lives. Lord. And that our family looks so perfect and wonderful. None of us have a perfect family. You know, none of us do. No, and there should be no. no shame in any of those things. But we need to strive to bring peace and to live in peace and to partner with those things. You know, I've always told my kids, even, I mean, they're like, can't keep their tongues. But, I mean, school mornings, they, they start making things worse for me. I'm like, man, you don't get to make my life not peaceful. So we just are peaceful people. So when it's all of a sudden it's not, and there's a lot of crying, and there's a lot of, whoa. This morning I'm like, whoa. Lot, lot, amen. What tried to invade us? Yes, ma'am. And yes, we ma partnered with it, yes. but we see you. Um, we yeah. see you, and we are Lord. going to live above because we're not going to partner with what the chaos of the world is releasing. We're not partnering with fear because if we don't get scared yeah. of COVID, there will be something else that we can get afraid of. Yes, ma'am. Our whole family is going to fall apart. Our, whole, you know, right. who knows? But I mean, everybody has their thing. Yes. So let us not partner with the things of the world right now in the chaos and understand what atmosphere. You're living in. Pay attention to the manure that you're walking in and, and settling for. You know, when you're in the middle of something and you're ready to rip someone's throat, like, well, I'm going outside. You know, you better. Uh, <laughs> I'm going in the kitchen. And it should have been the other way around. You know? No, it's like, okay, maybe you need to breathe. But you know what? What are we partnering with? And I know if yes, we're dealing with it, I, we are not the only ones. Right. Because it's not something we deal with on a regular basis. I don't deal with everybody in my house crying at everybody. And we just normally don't. But we. <laughs> no. You just. Do you understand yeah. what I'm doing? I don't want to say it over and over, but I'm just trying to get the point across. Remember, take a look. If you let chaos just rule and you let your kids rule in chaos, right. here's your moment. Right. You're the boss, parents. And it's, I mean, oh. don't make me crazy. That's what it's going to make me crazy. Yep. Nope. We're going to bring it down. We're going to be quiet. We have some peace. There's order. There, there's, yeah. amen. Yeah. So, and we as husbands and wives, and they just, yeah. that because of the chaos, it's so easy to let. And, and you know what? Social media puts us so much in our face constantly. Right. You know? I mean, my gosh, we have fights over masks. I mean, seriously. Right. Have, it's just this, you know? Yeah. Everyone's opinion and everyone's thought and everyone's. It does, is it worth it? So let's, let's just be aware of what is at work. Yes, ma'am. You know, when we're aware of it, it doesn't have the power over us unless you allow it to. Yes. Amen? Yes. Amen. So a few announcements. <laughs> Wednesday night, we will continue to pray. Amen. Amen. Come ready to pray. Come hearing what the Lord is saying. Come with scripture. Come ready to just agree with the prayers that are being released. Last Wednesday night was extremely powerful. We shifted something to a scary place. Honestly, thus, there we go. the chaos, thus the fear, thus the shaking. Okay, so we don't retreat, but we get a little smarter. Yes, thank right? you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And we keep moving forward. So come ready Wednesday night because you just need to be a part of those things. And if you're like, I don't know how to pray, well, guess what? That's how you learn. Yeah, yeah. It's not right yeah. or wrong. Just do it. Right? Just do it. Um, then, not this week, but the next week. It's like it starts on the 5th, where I think the 11th is the conference, the Supernatural Intensive Conference in Oklahoma City. The, um, the day sessions you have to register for, and it costs, I don't know what all of that is for sure. Um, Amy's put it on the Facebook group page. You can click on that and find out. But the evenings are free if you want to um, go up for any of the evenings. Andy and I will be going back and forth some. Um, that's a, it's a global awakening event. 
So we're really excited that's happening in Oklahoma. It's wow. a good thing. It's a powerful thing. And then that Sunday, Joe Moody will come here on her way out of the state. So that'll be a real great blessing for us to have her on that trip with us. So. Hallelujah. All right. Well, we're going to take an offering. And uh, while you're preparing to do that, we're going to totally surprise her by doing this. Athena, can you give a testimony? Okay. <laughs> Never mind. About last Sunday? It's not public. It's family. Yeah. Just, just give a quick testimony. Okay. Come on. We'll let her give her, gather her thoughts. We're going to make our offering declaration in a moment. stand together. We just praise God that God's touching people in the midst of our worship. Amen. And uh, you can give online at uh, globalharvestchurch.co and alright, so let's make these offering declarations together. As we receive today's offering, we are believing the Lord for jobs and better jobs raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, time and money, debts paid off, expenses decrease, blessing and increase. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of my financial needs, that I may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God. And promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. I almost got my hallelujah in there too. Here we go. God is good. He's faithful. Thank you for your faithfulness in giving. Praise God. A couple of announcements that I do want to make. I made them this morning in a couple of prayer requests. I made them in our prayer time. Uh, please pray for Steve and Sally Wilson. And uh, Steve and Sally both tested. We, we're not live, are we? Okay. okay. Anyway, so it's not common knowledge. So they tested positive for COVID 19 this week. And of course, Sally's in her 80s, Steve's in his 70s. Uh, so don't go on their Facebook and say, hey, I'm so sorry to hear that you have this. Not that it's a secret, but a lot of people don't know yet. So um, let me praying for them. I mean, they're a real spiritual mother and father. Also be praying for, we always want to bless other um, churches in our community. Uh, be praying for First Baptist Church of Long Grove. Their pastor tested positive for COVID-19. Wow. And they're not having service today. So um, it's just the moment we're in. But all of these people have mild symptoms from what I understand. And are doing very well, but we just bless them and we speak health and strength to them. Amen. And so it's the moment that we're living in. And uh, praise God. But we believe that God is eliminating this virus. And if we do happen to get it, He's going to keep us safe. Uh, keep us healthy. Amen. So praise God. All right. Let's dismiss the kids to go to their programs, to nursery, the children's church. Glory trains coming through here. Uh, well, pray for us, as Jamie kind of mentioned, and I won't go into detail, but um, we had to call the sheriff's department Thursday night because someone was knocking on Emily's door in our neighborhood and did that about three times. It's an exciting night, right? Uh, but I've been praying for us. And, but every 
Everybody's good. We didn't shoot anybody. Lord, you know, I, was, I was like, Barney five. Where's my bullet? <laughs> Gotta find my bullet. <laughs> right. Uh, but it was it was a strange night. So um, intrusion. But we don't allow those things in. Hallelujah. I want to continue this morning on becoming a prophetic people. Okay. And this is part two of that. And we laid a foundation last week. And, uh, you know, one of the keys to Pentecost and the outpouring of the Spirit is the ability to hear God's voice. Yeah. Amen. Before Pentecost, the disciples, the early uh, disciples and apostles, they were already doing miracles because of the impartation that, Je that Jesus had given them. But with the outpouring of the Spirit, there was this capacity to hear the voice of God. And it wasn't just for one person, and it wasn't just for a group of people. On the day of Pentecost, the 120 that were present were all baptized in the Spirit. Amen. And Peter made that declaration. This is what the prophet Joel said. I'm pouring out my Spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. There's this outpouring of the Spirit. So... One of the keys to Pentecost, and there's a new door that opened up on Pentecost that we went through. Now, how many of you know when you go through a new door and you go into a new season, everything's different? Right. Do you feel that? You're yeah. just like, and there's craziness all around. So we have to get acclimated, but the way we do that is we have to remember a part of the outpouring of the Spirit is hearing the voice of God hearing the will of God, and not only hearing it, but obeying it and declaring what God is saying. Amen. That is the prophetic anointing. Amen. And we're going to need this anointing operating in our lives and in the church more than ever in this new season that we're in. Have you noticed that even a lot of the prophetic voices are trying to get a grip right now? Right. Get a handle on what's yeah. happened? And even many of them are like, we're just trying to hear what's going on. And some of them have been very quiet, and part of that was because there's a season of rest. Some of them are declaring many strong, powerful things, but we have to hear what God is saying. Now, last week we talked about the purpose of prophetic ministry, okay? And uh, I want to turn to 1 Corinthians 14.3, which is a very familiar passage of Scripture, but it's a very foundational Scripture. And when we're talking about basic prophetic ministry in the church, this is the purpose right here. It says, uh, but one who prophesies speaks to men for edification and exhortation and consolation. Now, I'm not going to go back into all that. You can listen and watch last, uh, last Sunday's message. But uh, here, here's that element of, again, to edify is to build up, to strengthen, and to make more effective. Amen. To exhort is to stimulate, to encourage, and to admonish, and to comfort is to cheer up. Now, how many of you know Jamie was speaking prophetically this morning? Now, she didn't say, thus saith the Lord, which I don't think we should really say that anyway. Um, but she was prophetically exhorting people, amen, and admonishing and, and saying, hey, this thing's going on, pay attention, okay? That was a prophetic declaration, a prophetic admonition, amen. Now, what's interesting is when, when we're walking in this and we're, we're, we're encouraging, we're exhorting, we're edifying, we're comforting, how many of you know what two of Satan's most common attacks are? Condemnation and discouragement. Anybody ever been attacked by condemnation and discouragement? Come on now. Anybody this week get attacked by that? Yeah. Right? Anybody this morning get attacked by that? Yeah. Right? It's kind of, it happens a lot. So, do you see why the prophetic anointing is so important to keep us encouraged and built up and moving forward so that this thing doesn't hit us? Okay? And that's one very basic function of the prophetic anointing. You ever been discouraged? And yeah. someone comes in with a prophetic word? Yes, sir. And it may not be the most detailed Sean Bolt's word. Right. 
They may not have declared your address, right? Or any of those things, or told you that you were born under a special star or anything like that. It may have just been something very simple that encouraged you and kept you moving forward, okay? That's one of the basic functions of the prophetic. Amen? And so, you know, God wants us growing in this, amen? And, uh, you know, one of the things is, here's the reality. Sometimes people are like, well, you can't train people to move in the prophetic. Uh, yes, yeah. you can. Yes, sir. Absolutely. There are spiritual senses that we develop, right? Uh, there are skills that we develop by spending time with God and listening to his voice and developing connection and relationship with the prophetic is really friendship with God. Okay. Listening to his voice and, and then hearing what he's saying because God likes to share secrets. He does. Oh, thank you. He likes to share secrets. How many of you like to share secrets with your friend? Not necessarily talking about gossip. Right? But don't you like if something happens and you can't tell everybody yet? Who do you tell first? You tell your bestie. You know, or your, hopefully your spouse, and maybe your spouse is your bestie, right? But you, you tell a friend because it's good to have someone that you can share with. Okay, God is actually like that. He's looking for people to share His heart. And so we can actually develop prophetic skill. Amen. Now, this morning, I, I touched on this a little bit last week, but I want to talk about the uh, when we move into a little bit more advanced prophetic anointing. Amen. Who wants to go further? Who wants to go higher? Yes, Lord. Who wants to go deeper? Yes, right? Lord. Who wants to grow up? Please. There was a little bit of a hesitancy there. Right? And, but, but that's part of it. There's this maturity that God's wanting to bring to his people. And so, you know, as I talk about this, keep in mind uh, these four things, and hopefully I can get to all of them. But these are to be executed by people who have grown in their gifting. Okay? And you'll see that as we go through it. So, first of all, and I'll, I'll list four of them like I did last week, but the, the four things in the prophetic function that are a little more advanced are um, the fun ones first. The first one's fun. Fun ones first. Conviction. Hallelujah. Man, that is a good word, isn't it? We love that in the church in America. <laughs> Conviction. Impartation. Yes. Direction. And foretelling. Not fortune telling. Okay. Foretelling. There's a difference, right? So we're going to talk, first of all, about conviction, okay? Now, let's turn to 1 Corinthians. We already should be there in 1 Corinthians 14. But let's flip over, uh, at least in my Bible. Let's begin reading at verse 23 and go through verse 25, okay? If, therefore, the whole church should assemble together and all speak in tongues, and ungifted men or unbelievers enter, will they not say that you are mad? Okay. Right. Now, now, that's different. They're talking about a public setting. That's different than perhaps being in a prayer meeting or something, right, or a, a time like that. Then it goes on to say, but if all prophesy, and an unbeliever or an ungifted man enters, he is Convicted by all and is called to account by all. The secrets of his heart are disclosed and he will fall on his face and worship God, declaring that God is certainly among you. Isn't that interesting? Basically, Paul's saying, listen, if somebody comes into your gathering and you're all just speaking in tongues the whole time, they're going to be confused and they're going to think that you're nuts. But if someone, an unbeliever, comes into your midst and they start declaring prophetically the secrets of their heart, of your heart, yeah. you're going to be convicted. Yeah. You know, years ago, we were at um, 
Voice of the Apostles, I think it was when we were in Nashville, and somebody was telling us a story about one of, they were prophesying to one of the vendors, and they were like, well, I don't know who you people are. He said, but you're the sixth person who's told me that exact thing today, and you were all completely right. Isn't it funny when you get into a prophetic group, yeah. and they're all reading your mail. Yep. Right? I mean, I know, and you guys have heard me talk about this, when we were in the nation of Japan, you know, we would advertise that we would do prophetic ministry because people were going to fortune tellers. And so they would come, come to a service knowing nothing about Jesus. They would come and we would prophesy to them, read their mail, and then say, listen, you need to be born again. Yeah, yeah. Right? And, um, you know, that is one of the, the purposes of prophetic ministry. Now, again, that's something that you have to grow into. Yes, sir. Amen. Uh, it's, and, and, but, you know, let me give you the, the definition of conviction. Being persuaded or convinced, being convicted at the bar of one's own conscience as a sinner in view of God's law. So it's really not a bad thing to get convicted. Right. The Holy Spirit will do that, right? And there needs there needs to be a little bit more conviction of sin in the church. Yeah, amen. We've lost some of that, right? Now, again, we as people need to be careful. We don't need to convict. We don't need to condemn good, people, good, right? but we need to allow the ministry of the Holy Spirit to convict people. Amen. Now, here's the difference: sincere Christians need encouragement. We've just been talking about encouragement. But God will often use stronger measures to reach unbelievers. Now, he'll still do it in love. Right? And we're going to talk about the woman at the well in a minute. Did, did Jesus read her mail? Yeah. And some of it was kind of, yeah. kind of shameful. But he did it in love, didn't he? And so let's, let's just look at that. Let's turn to John. Chapter 4, beginning in verse 15. Now, there's a reality here that we're, we're getting an equipping for evangelism this morning. It's good. Right? It's we're good. getting an equipping for evangelism because this is such a tool in evangelism that God wants to use. Yeah. Right? And uh, unfortunately, a lot of churches don't do this because, for one thing, they don't even believe in prophetic ministry. So, you know, this is a valuable, valuable tool. So let's turn, if you haven't already, to John 14. And, um, sorry, John 4, beginning in verse 15. Here's Jesus talking to the woman at the well. And so the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water. He's telling her about this living water. He said, if you had this water, that this living water, it would spring up in you all the time. And she says, sir, give me this water so I will not be thirsty nor come all the way here to draw. And so he said to her, go call your husband and come here. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. And Jesus said to her, you have well said, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one whom you now have is not your husband. This you have said truly. And this always, this next verse always makes me laugh. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. And isn't it funny? Jesus read her mail. He stated a true fact. He still did it in love. And you know what she tried to give him is to give him a religious answer. Right? Because she knew just enough to say, I'm going to deflect. I'm trying to deflect what you're doing. Jesus, you know how Jesus won this woman? It wasn't by a miracle. I believe in miracles. I believe that God's wanting to do miracles not only in the church, but outside of the church. Right? Because that is a that is a sign of the kingdom. Right? And if the kingdom is present, the miraculous will be present. But Jesus won this woman through prophetic evangelism. And I love what it goes on to say. They continue to talk a little bit more. And um, 
And then in verse 28, he, he says, it says, So the woman left her water pot and went into the city and said to the men, it's funny that she went to the men, Come, see a man who told me all the things that I have done. This is not the Christ, is it? Right? So she gets touched and she goes and tells everybody simply because Jesus stated a fact that only he, that he could know only by the Spirit. And it did something deep within her. And she became, really, the first evangelist. Going and telling people what Jesus had done. And it was unlocked because of the conviction of the Holy Spirit that came through prophetic ministry. Amen. Now, here's the thing. A lot of churches have said don't believe in this. But a lot of churches do. But we keep it within the four walls of the church. And there's a purpose for that. We need it. We need to encourage one another. We need to edify one another. We need to build up the church. Amen. But there's also an element that we've been given these tools. And I'm telling you what, guys, more than ever, people are looking for answers. Is that not true? Are we, as our society, like, what is going on? Yeah. Right? There's a great shaking. You have an anointing. Well. You have tools from the Holy Spirit to give people answers and draw them to Jesus. Oh. And we're, we've, we've got to have, this has got to be working in our lives. Amen. Right? Because there is an assault on Christianity. Yeah. Which is one of the first steps that happens when someone tries to bring socialism and communism into a society. Wow. Wow. Right? And we have to use the tools that we've been given. We're in a moment where the church has got to shift from being entertainment driven yes, uh, yes. to purpose driven. Yes. Right? Well, we're in a moment where we're all commissioned. When you got saved, guess what? You entered the army of the Lord. Anybody ever been in the military here? We've got a few. Okay. Frank has. When Frank went into the army, Frank, did you really have were able to have a lot of opinions that you gave to your commanding officer? <laughs> Did you tell him what you were going to do? No. <laughs> well, well. <laughs> right. When you get drafted in the army of the Lord, right now, thank God he loves us. Yes. Yes. Okay. But he's commissioned us all to be in his army. Right. Amen. We've been commissioned to do the stuff. Today, you are not a pew warmer. Come on. Anybody ever play sports and like to sit on the pew? Oh. Or the bench? Oh. Kind of the same thing. Yeah. Oh. If you're playing sports, you want to be on the field. Right? You want to be in the game. Well, when you got saved, now you may have had to go through some practices, yeah, yeah, yeah. some refining, some conditioning. Yeah. Those are like two days, man. All that stuff, you know, out in August and you're running and growing up. It's just the best. <laughs> but you had to do that to get on the field. You know, yeah. the army of the Lord, the, the playing field of the Lord, it's kind of the same way. Yeah. Right? There's a conditioning, there's a preparation, there's a training so that you can get in the game. <laughs> After some of you need some deliverance and maybe throw up. I don't know. <laughs> no, we don't do that. It's not our style, right? Uh, there is a more excellent way. Yes. <laughs> but you got drafted. That's good. That's good. You were the top pick. Oh. Huh? Right. <laughs> You're in the game. Yeah, right? boy. And so God wants to tap on you and use you outside of the four walls of the church. Now, I'm just going to be honest. That's inconvenient. 
I know one of my biggest things is not allowing God to speak through me to other people, but it's I don't want to take the time to do it. There it is. Yeah. Right? Because we're we're really selfish people. Yeah. But God's wanting to activate us and He's wanting to bring us into that higher place, that place of greater maturity where we're hearing his voice and, and not just telling each other that God loves us. And hear me, there's a place for that. Yeah, yeah. But going and releasing the voice of the Lord into our communities, our homes, our offices, our cities, right? Charlie Sand this morning, they're, they're at Chaz. They've gone into the autonomous zone to go to minister to people, which wow. I think it's kind of breaking apart because it's amazing that eventually you run out of food. Especially if you're vegan. Right? For real. No, really. They, they did that. They set up their perimeters and then they were tweeting and saying, the homeless people took all of our food. Please bring soy meat substitutes. And we... We don't believe in guns, but we've set up borders and have guns to keep people out. Do we see the insanity and the hypocrisy of the Antichrist yeah. spirit that's yeah. trying to work? Yeah. <laughs> but they're, they're taking the prophetic anointing Lord. as prophetic evangelists. Aaron Packard, some of you know Aaron. Aaron's from Kansas. He's with him. They're going in to release that anointing. Amen. And guess what? We don't have to go into the, I don't really want to go to the, into the autonomous zone. God would. Jesus, you heard how we do it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but he's wanting to use us here. And I heard Larry Randolph say one time, and Larry's a great prophetic guy a little way of communicating. He said, maybe there'll come a day, and some of y'all don't get excited when I say this. He said, maybe there'll come a day when on when we're regularly having our service, we put up a sign where we're not here, and he said, we've gone fishing. <laughs> where we actually have gone out to minister to the lost. So that means that we really go out to minister to the lost. Wow. And don't just go home and take a nap. We're actually going to do that. Right? Praise God. So God's wanting to use us to take this prophetic anointing to the lost. Now, next, the next thing that God does with the prophetic anointing is, and we understand a lot of this, but there's an element of impartation. Okay? Now, uh, now let me give you a definition, and as we're doing this, let's turn to 1 Timothy 4.14 Now, the definition of impartation to share bestow or dispense something that has great value and substance Now, often and generally impartation is accompanied by the laying on of hands and prophetic ministry. Okay? Now we see this, 1 Timothy 4.14, Paul talking to Timothy, do not neglect the spiritual gift within you which was bestowed upon you through prophetic utterance and the laying on of hands by the presbytery. Amen. So when Timothy was ordained, they gathered him together, they prophesied over him, they laid hands on him, and they released a spiritual gift to him. Okay. And it did come through authority, and it came through relationship. Right. Now, it's really interesting right, that, that you can only impart what you possess. You can't impart something that you do not have. If I had COVID-19 today, praise God, I don't think I do. 
and they've already had it in February, right? <laughs> but, and I, I, and I lay my hands on somebody and rub my snot over them and say, right, I'm giving you the measles. If I don't have the measles, I can't give them the measles, but if I've got COVID, I can impart that. It's a terrible example for a Sunday morning right now. <laughs> but we're making it really real. Suddenly everybody moves over from their neighbor. <laughs> Let's social distance, right? But, you know, you can only give somebody what you have. If you want somebody to pray for you that has never raised somebody from the dead, and you're like, man, I want that anointing you have. Well, that's kind of dumb. Yeah. That they, they, you can't give what you don't have. Okay? And so impartation, and again, it's by the Spirit. Even Randy Clark, when he prays for people, and I just try to get impartation from Randy on a regular basis. Yeah. There's, there's, it's such a powerful gift of impartation. Right? So, but even Randy says, you know, I can lay hands on people, I can, I can pray, but it is up to the Lord. And it's a deposit that can only come by the Spirit. Now, I know in my life, just from the continuous impartation that I've gotten from Him, it's done something in my life. Yeah. I come away, it's done something in this church. Right? Yeah. The, the impartation that people have brought into this church, and they come in and minister not only um, individually, but corporately, for those who have capacity to receive, there's impartation that comes, right? So I'm thankful, I'm thankful. I'm excited that Joe's going to be with us again. Yes, Father Lord. Last time Joe was here, I got rocked. Yeah. I mean, our supernatural school graduation that we had with Joe, I couldn't leave for like an hour. So I got some type of impartation. Even since that moment, there are certain times I feel that anointing and it's a sensation that I hadn't had before, right? It's crazy. I'm excited about the impartation that Ian Carroll's bringing. Yes, hallelujah. There's a greater impartation that, that, that God is sending through people. Amen. Now, just some other references to impartation because you're like, well, how much is that in the Bible? Right? Jacob imparted a father's blessing to his 12 sons through the laying on of his hands yeah. in Genesis 48 and 49. Right? Moses gave an impartation to Joshua and anointed him to lead in the book yeah. of Numbers. Yeah. Right? Jesus gave his original 12 disciples, or the 12 apostles, and yeah. even the 70, he gave them an impartation before the outpouring of the Spirit to go out and heal the sick, raise the dead, and cast out demons. Yeah. Right? Now, there was an impartation for that. Now, there's that's part of our, our basic equipment that we have as believers. However, we can receive an impartation that causes us to grow. Yes, amen. Okay. It's available, and, it's, and it generally comes through the prophetic ministry. One of the things that's really fun as well is that when you travel with someone or you minister with someone that has a certain anointing, it gets off on you. If you're on a global awakening mission trip with Randy, generally you feel like you need to come back and start your own traveling healing ministry because there's so many miracles. And you're just like, I am anointed. Which is true, but there's a reality that you're ministering under a healing apostle. You ever hang out with prophets? Suddenly you get really prophetic. I have a friend who likes me to travel with him. And I'm not a prophet, but I can move in the prophetic. I have a friend sometimes who wants me to go with him because he's like, man, I want to prophesy with you. Because it, it activates something, right? And so there, there's an impartation that can come, even sometimes just from being around people and being in an environment where you are receiving the anointing that's on their life. Get a deposit and you catch something. Right? We're all talking about catching stuff right now. But 
when you get in the proximity yes, of yes, a kingdom yes. anointing, you catch something. Amen. So man, when that's going on, I want in on it. Amen. I, I want to be present. I want to receive an impartation. And did you know what you honor, you'll receive from? Because sometimes you can be an anointing, and because you don't honor it, you won't receive. It's always strange to me how the, the same two people can be in the same circumstance, and sometimes someone can get totally whacked and receive something, and the other receives nothing because it's the reality of whether they're honoring what's present or not. That's so good. Honor will actually bring impartation. Okay? And there, there's a, 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 a mature prophetic anointing will release even prophetic words that cause impartation to come through their prophetic release. You ever been there where someone's given you a word where it activated you into something for the next season? And not only did it activate, not only was it just a prophetic word, but you got an impartation. Now, for one thing, again, it's because of honor. You could have said, oh my gosh, I received that word. Or you could have been like, you're an absolute idiot. <laughs> Will you get the impartation? I think you'll actually miss it. Impartation is key to receive. Now, that goes hand in hand with the next one. Do we want to do we want to receive impartation? Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Right. And I want to receive impartation. I'm wanting to move on, but I can't just yet. Right. Right. And, and when when God is doing something, right? Our presence, our hunger our honor will cause us to receive something. Yes, absolutely. So I want to admonish you when there are opportunities for impartation, and even sometimes when it doesn't even look like impartation, right. you can catch something that God's doing. Right? We need everything that God's pouring out right now. We're in a new season. Yes. We're in a new moment where there's been an incredible shift and we need the impartation I think the landscape of the church yep. by this time next year will look completely different Absolutely. it's going to look completely different it's already shifting so fast that some people don't know what to do with it I don't know what that's going to look like, but it, it's shifting quickly, right? Hallelujah. All right, I can move on now. Direction. The third thing is direction. Okay, now again, um, this is one of the vital aspects of the prophetic. You know, when you are giving directional words. Now, don't enter into this unless you are mature in prophetic ministry. Right. Because you don't want to send someone down the wrong path. Right, absolutely. Now, Ultimately, it's up to people to judge the prophetic words they've been given. But if you give them prophetic words that are off, there's an element of responsibility that you have. Yeah. Let me say that again. Yes, if you, Because <laughs> we're real good about here about, okay, man, we can all move with the yeah. prophetic. Yeah. But maturity means that you have responsibility. Sometimes we want maturity without the responsibility and the accountability. But in the prophetic, the level that you start moving in, you have a greater responsibility. But directional words are very, very important. Amen. Now, some quick scriptural examples. Amen. Paul. I don't know, I'm not going to read the scriptures, but in the book of Acts, in uh, chapter 21, Paul keeps getting, and there's a lot of controversy about this. Paul keeps getting this word. If you go to Jerusalem, they're going to bind you with chains. That's not a very encouraging word. Right? But Paul went anyway. Right? And ultimately, now he had a fruitful ministry there, but he was ultimately martyred. 
And some people are of the position that Paul did not listen to the prophetic admonition, where some are of the other ad, uh, uh, other opinion that they were seeing accurately, but they were giving the word in a wrong manner. You can study that out. You know, you give me your opinion. Oh, really? No, just give your spouse. I don't know. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> But there were directional words that were given, right? Philip, in, in Acts chapter 8, was directed both by an angel and the Spirit of God to minister to an Ethiopian eunuch. Okay. It's really interesting that an angel, he got translated, an angel told him to go this one direction, and then the Spirit told him to go this one way. It's really interesting, but, but prophetically, God was directing him. You know, we have tons of examples of that. For us personally, right? there came a moment when Sam Matthew said, hey, I feel like the Lord is saying that you're supposed to go to the nation of Japan. <laughs> now, that is that a directional word? Right. That is yeah. a huge directional word, but it came from an apostolic voice in our life. Yeah. Right? And thank God I had already heard that from the Lord and was like, about a week later, Sam said, this is what I'm hearing from you guys. We prayed about it, said this is the Lord. There's a prophetic process, which isn't my, my point today. But direction, right? Direction in our lives individually. Direction in this church corporately. We've had key voices that have spoken into us as a body that have, that have caused us to move in certain directions. Amen. And that's healthy. That's that's a really, really good thing. Amen. Now, and then the last one, and, and a lot of times when people think of prophetic ministry, <coughs> this is the one that they think of. But there's an element of foretelling things, yes. predicting things, okay? And that is an element really that can happen, but it generally, again, this is a very, very mature prophetic function. Amen. Now, I want to look at Amos chapter 3 verse 7. Amos chapter 3 verse 7. Surely the Lord God does nothing Unless he reveals his secret counsel to his servants, the prophets. Okay? Now, I don't think everybody can function in this. Just going to be honest. I think don't try to get out of your gift. Right? Because you'll, you'll get into flakiness and weirdness. Right? But let mature office prophets function in this. I know that there were some voices that spoke of what we're living in right now. I mean, Chuck Pierce was one of them, right? Chuck Pierce saw this plague-like thing coming around Passover, right? Charlie Shamp, 2018, he said, I see um, this, uh, this thing being released from a lab. Right? This, this virus. Said we need to pray because I see this happening, and you know. And he's also seen the elimination of COVID nineteen. Praise God, right? There's a lot I could say about that, but I won't, because I still have a lot of questions. But we have to be listen, because when God's doing things, He's revealing it to prophets. Right? Yeah. The verse we read Wednesday night. Listen to his prophets and what? You will fail. No. You will succeed. You will prosper. Right? That's the things we prayed Wednesday night when Jehoshaphat. They didn't know what to do because there was this great attack against them. And the prophets came and said, hey, if you'll do this, if you'll go out and begin to worship, I'm going to deliver you. Right. And so that's what they did. They begin to go and they just begin to praise. And the, those enemies all begin to turn on each other. 
but they follow the strategy of the prophets. In this moment, we need to hear the prophetic voices of what God's saying. Now, again, we have to be careful because there are many, many crazy voices out here. But God is wanting to us to hear. Maybe you need it. You know, you may not have a national word, but you may have a word for your family. Mary Kay is bad for me. It's good for some of y'all. It's bad for me. Um, maybe God wants to give you a word for your family. To be prepared for the next season. There came a moment when I got laid off several years ago. But I had a dream and knew it was coming. So the day I got laid off, Jamie and I joked about it. She said, I'll see you at 10 o'clock. I went to work, got out of my car, and I've already been saving money. Jim, God's really practical. Yeah. Well, I'm just going to live by faith. <laughs> no, the Lord showed me what's happening, so I started saving money. Is that what happened when the famine came on Egypt? What did Joseph do? They stored food for seven years. Now, I'm not advising you to all be hoarders and conspiracy theorists. Okay. Though some of us maybe wish we had more toilet paper a few weeks ago. Oh, come on. Right? Or had slaughtered some beef, right? But I, and I walked in, and as I was walking from my car to the front door, the Lord said, Andy, it's a new day. And I was like, oh, no. Lord, you're really, it's right. And by 10 o'clock, I was home because I'd gotten laid off. Thank you, Brienne. Um, <laughs> right? <laughs> but, you know, God wants to speak to us. He wants us to navigate. Now, if you were blindsided in a layoff, don't be, that's not a condemnation of any life. Because life is crazy. Right? But, but, you know, the Lord wants to speak to us. He wants to communicate with us for the success of our lives. But he's also wanting to anoint a prophetic church yeah. that will move in what yeah, he's saying. Lord. And I think that will be one of the great distinguishing marks in the days ahead as, as the people of God. Are we hearing the voice of God or not? Again, not a condemnation because God's good. Yes. And he'll keep us in the midst of turmoil. But we have to have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. You're living in the outpouring of the Spirit. Yes, Lord. That hasn't ended. Nope. It's only increasing. There's an outpouring of the Spirit on all flesh. Do you have flesh today? We have flesh. Therefore, the Spirit has been poured out on you today, equipping you, preparing you for what God wants to do in you and through you at this moment. Now, don't miss the day of His visitation. Yes. Don't miss what he's doing. Let's let's stand together. Hallelujah. Father, thank you today for each one of these people. Father, their families, those that weren't able to be here today because of different circumstances. But Lord, there's an anointing that you're further giving this morning. And we're present to receive it. So Father... We just release and call forth a greater impartation for the prophetic anointing in every person. Father, you're equipping us to be fishers of men. Father, we just honor what you're pouring out this morning. Father, we, we receive that anointing of the Spirit further in all of our lives. Father, not only to move in the basic prophetic but, Father, I thank you that you're causing a maturity to cause to come 
upon this body and upon this people. We need this anointing for the new season. Amen. Father, we Help need this God. anointing for the new day. Father, we need this anointing for the prophetic commission yes, that we have been given as the church. So, Father, thank you for what you're releasing this morning. Thank you, God, for the greater, greater release of prophetic anointing, the greater capacity to hear the voice of God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you're doing. Father, we as a church just catch it right now. Lord, we catch it right now, what you're doing. We have eyes to see, ears to hear. Father, we open our hearts. God, we don't shut off our hearts. And we don't hide from what you're doing. Lord, we receive what you're pouring out right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We just receive. Yeah, the Lord's just really touching you. Yeah. I want you to open your parents' mouth and say to you, but I'm just very, very aware there is an increasing anointing on you. Just a capacity to hear the voice of God. I know you hear the voice of God. I know you don't talk about it a lot, but I know that you hear the voice of God. And so thank you, Lord, for the door of encounter that you're Thank you for that door of encounter that you're opening to her right now. Thank you for the more. Thank you for the release of that prophetic anointing. Thank you, God. More, Lord. More for me, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. More, more, more. Thank you, Father. Thank you for what you're pouring out right now. Thank you for the more. Thank you, Lord. Just receive. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you for Josh. Thank you for what you've given him. And Lord, I thank you even, Josh, I just think that um, the Lord's going to put a demand on you in the days ahead. And um, there's a lot of things that you have to say that need to be said. So there is a, a well of wisdom, and there's a well of prophetic wisdom in you. And I, I see just this overflow in this season. And so um, there's a demand that the Lord's putting on you. Um, so it's not going to be a hard demand, right? But it's very easy. But I just see like that well just opening, opening. You're, you already do it, but there are words of life in you. Your family's heard them. Some people around you have heard them, but it's time for other people to hear the words of life that are in you. Amen? Is that good? Is that okay? <laughs> thank you, Lord. Father, thank you. Thank you for what you're releasing. We just received this morning. Thank you, God. Glory to God. Amen. 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 Stop there. Thank you, Lord. So let's just continue receiving throughout the week. Amen. And don't be distracted in your house. I know Jamie said that, but be intentional about receiving this anointing throughout the week, developing it, and walking in it. It is a skill that we develop. Use and by giving ourselves to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Yes. Be praying for Dwayne today. Dwayne will be leading um, service at 5 o'clock in Rockwall, Texas. And uh, Jane Rush, Scott Rush's wife, passed away this week from cancer. And so some of us will be going down for that service. Uh, but pray for Scott. Scott's a friend, he's a friend to this ministry. 
and uh, pray for Dwayne. It is just never easy to do a funeral service. It's just never easy, no matter who you're who you're doing that for. So just pray for grace for him. So. Amen. Amen. Have a good week. Remember Wednesday night. And remember Sunday. God bless. Be blessed. Grow. Amen. Amen. Amen.